Hey, I'm Adam. Oh, I'm Dave. And this is fiction or nonfiction. Cue music. Hey, so this is the show where me and Dave unpack viral stories, news articles, and determine if they are true or false, if they happen to be fiction or nonfiction. And we have had guests before on the program. And by that, I mean, we've had one guest. And I feel like... Did you say guest or guests? Well, that's the thing. We really just had one guest before. In the but we had of... them more than once. So the, does that count as two or one? This is a very deep philosophical question. I don't know. But okay. what we're going to do is we're going to break the trend. We're going to have someone on this episode who's not Becky. Everyone, okay. and by that I mean you listening at home. Hopefully you're not driving while listening to this. Give a big hand for Dan. Hello. How's it going? So, Dan, thanks for agreeing to um, – I don't know if you agreed as so much as we've coerced you into joining us. Yeah. Well, it's happening, right? So that's all that, that's all that matters. So uh, – Dan, what we want to do when we have guests on here is we want to have the stories we tell be somehow related to their interest or to something that they enjoy or are knowledgeable about. So, Dave, I was thinking about Dan. I was thinking, what does he like? What is something I can identify Dan with? And I've heard that Dan is a fan of the Pokemon. Yep, yep. Yes, I am. Um, started playing the, the video games back when I was a kid on the good old Game Boy. Yeah, you know, I've even tried uh, the Pokemon Go here and there, you know. Did you put a lot of money into it? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. (laughs) So, you know, let's just assume Dave knows nothing about Pokemon. I know a few things. Okay, what do you know? I know a little bit. Okay, so that means he knows nothing. No, I do do know. I've played some of the games. But, yeah, I know, like, there's different Pokemons and they morph and sometimes you got to catch them all. So so this is the thing with Pokemon... (laughs) It's a direct translation from its original Japanese is Pocket Monster, which uh, is basically what it is. is a game where you go around collecting monsters and you store them. And it's kind of like a fun little adventure game, but it has a big learning curve. There's challenges in there as you learn how to combat some Pokemon against other Pokemon in order to defeat them in battle and then collect them. I'm pretty much describing Pokemon pretty good for those who have no idea, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's for the most part it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a legend around the original Pokemon games. Uh, And I think they were the original ones, Pokemon Red and Blue. Yeah, as far as I know, those were the original ones. There could be some older Japanese ones that uh, came before it, but uh, those are like the main the main original ones that uh, most people over here have played. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I think those were like kind of the thing that really generated that interest in Pokemon. Of course, there was the card game as well, the uh, anime and cartoon that was very popular for a while in the late 90s, early 2000s. And it's uh, had a comeback. Quite a big, substantial comeback. We see more Pokemon games. You mentioned Pokemon Go. There was the film Detective Pikachu. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the original game and the legend around it. A legendary glitch. If I give the name of this, I want to see if this rings a bell to you. Missing number. I know of one of the glitches in the games where you could get like a limited number of like rare candies, master balls, and different kind of balls and different things like that. Um, there was a glitch that you could do that. Um, is that the one you're talking about? No, no, this is a different one. So Dave, have you ever heard about this before? I have not. Okay, so this has been something that's been a long-held legend in the Pokemon collecting community. Missing number is a glitch. In fact, not only is it a glitch, it is an uncatalogued Pokemon that you can actually access. According to information that you can scour off of various websites, Missing Number is a very famous video game glitch in which if you perform a series of actions including what appear to be random, nonsensical movements across the world, you will encounter a battle with missing number and you can collect this additional pokemon which is not part of the original pokemon index the the big catalog if you will of all the pokemon that were featured in the original games so my question to you both is this fiction or non-fiction i'm gonna say it's not fiction so you think it's true you think it's a true thing okay it could be 
I don't know. You, don't waver, Dave. You, one or the other. I'm gonna say no. It's not. It, it's it, it's. Wait, what did I say? Uh, <laughs> I think you you've lost your turn. Okay, go ahead, Dan. With the of the other glitch, I already know of. Um, I do think that it is um, nonfiction. Mm, okay. So. Let's talk about this a little bit, because before we give the answer, I, I do love unpacking, and especially hearing from someone who has interest in this, what would be your first step to actually identify and figure out, is this true or not? Well, nowadays, probably go to a Reddit. That would probably be my first dabble in trying to figure out if this is true or not. But back when I was younger and actually playing those games, Reddit was around, but... It wasn't as popular as it is today. So yeah, it would just be trying to search the internet to see, you know, um, maybe maybe there'd be a YouTube video that would show um, how to do it. Yeah, those would be my first couple steps to try and see if um, it's true or not. Okay, so those are pretty good answers. You're going to do some research, see what other players, like the Pokemon community, have said and then see if there's some sort of evidence online, like a video of someone performing this glitch on YouTube. Or even a screenshot, right? Or a screenshot, okay. Dave, you know I've scrutinized a lot of what you said on the show. I, I don't have anything against you, but oh. from this experience, what do you think I would say to that? We've been talking about on the episodes how you have to try and get it from a reputable source, but this is a little different because it's a video game. You just have to play it. And if you hear of something, it, it reminds me of something from a while ago when I was much younger. When Nintendo 64 came out, they said, oh, if you do something a certain way in the game, you can play as Luigi, which I'm pretty sure was fake because I was never able to find it. Yeah, I, it reminds me of that is what I'm saying. Like people can make up stuff. They can even manufacture like a make up a fake graphic, especially it, now. And, you know, that is one thing I would say definitely on Reddit. You know, there is a very strong community that kind of I would say polices itself to make sure the information going on there, people want to authenticate it, they want to make sure that this is legitimate. But then at the same time, you know, what is to say someone isn't doctoring an image, modifying it? There have been actually a lot of different video game legends that have been posted online, including things where you can get Luigi in Mario 64, or you can find this weird child in Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask if you do so certain movements in the game, or you even tilt the game cartridge into the actual console a certain way. That's pretty advanced. I never heard that last part. I've heard that people have tried it, and their <laughs> entire system has crashed, and the game cannot play anymore, so probably don't recommend that. That's pretty uh, hilarious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which not is, for them. But. No, not for them, which I'm pretty sure is why people do it, because it's the whole hacker <laughs> sort of idea that I'm going to give information out there, and if someone does it and they mess up their own system, well, it's their problem. Yeah, the good old trolls of the world. <laughs> exactly. So this is something else, because you mentioned Reddit, and I'm glad you did, because on Reddit, along with various other gaming databases and leaderboards and just um, different boards in general, People have advised, here are the steps to go through with it, but we're advising you not to, because if you do, you could have corrupt data, which includes the erasure of your game file. For this Pokemon thing? For this Pokemon legend. So what do you think about that? I don't know. I, I'm just thinking, what you said, it was called missing number? Missing number. So like, number. What, what would it look like? Would it just be a giant number? Would it be a question mark? Would I, it be a question mark with fangs? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought that up because there have been screen caps. Okay. So, so as per Dan's request to say, are there images of it? You can actually Google it, missing number. And what you're going to see is the Pokemon catcher going against face-to-face -face with the Pokemon. Usually it's rendered as one of the 151 Pokemon from the original game. But this is a series of random blocks of graphics because this is what the legend is behind Missing Number. Okay. Missing Number is a stray line of code. Basically, the code is missing a number, which is why it's called Missing Number. And what happens is when the Pokemon is generated, when you do these different steps, instead of saying you are battling, let's say Pikachu, for example, you instead have text that comes up saying, you are battling missing number. 
because there's no data for that actual glitch. And the way the Pokemon looks is just a bunch of random images and blocks. If this isn't true, you're making me believe that it is. I can be very convincing, I know. Yeah, you're definitely swaying me a little bit. Are you lying? You're very convincing right now. Can uh, you tell us? Um, do you want to know? <laughs> or do you Actually, no. Let's end the episode right now. Okay, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, okay, but let's let's think about it this way, and I'm gonna I, let's bring it back to Dan because I'm curious. So, I would say these screen captures, even though they show what looks pretty authentic, people can doctor these images, and even with videos, people can do some really amazing stuff with video editing. So, I would say that's not good enough for me. What would you then advise? What should we try to do? Yeah. So if the if the um... Image, the screen caps and images or videos that you see you're, you're not really believing, then yeah, the next would be to try and look for a steps to how to replicate that. And then you go and play the game and try and replicate it. But here's the tricky thing. Do you want to do that if it can corrupt your game data? Well, that's, that's the thing. Um, I don't know if I would play it on if I had a very good file where, you know, like I had all 151 Pokemon. Um, I may not. Not that I play right now, so if I did come across one, I might um, try it out because I'm not really playing. But if I was, you know, intensely playing the game, it would have me worried that it would corrupt my file. But then you got to start all over again, right? Got to catch them all all over again. Yep. And hopefully whatever the glitch is, if it's supposed to corrupt data, it's not going to do it so much where the game's unplayable at that point. Ooh, I didn't really think about that if it made the whole game unplayable. Yeah, that that would not be good. Yeah, I don't know about that. That would make me probably not do it. So doing it ourselves is a little bit risky. We might not want to risk damaging our cartridges, especially since it's rare to come across an original Pokemon red or blue cartridge. What if what if you ask like a friend that you don't really like very much to borrow theirs? <laughs> <laughs> to borrow theirs? And then you can say, I don't know what happened. I'm the, not condoning the this, The magic by the way. of friendship. <laughs> Perfect. Um, well, my next question would be, is there a source that you would trust on this? Because like we said, online, you never really know who's posting. We don't know if they have an agenda, if they're just trying to troll you. Is there some sort of source that you would trust coming forward and saying this glitch is real and legitimate? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Um, like I'd, I'd ask some friends if any... Any of them had ever done it or heard of it? I guess it could depend on the site that you read it on. Like, what, it, what if it's on, like, a Nintendo website, like an official site or something? Would that count? What do you think, Dan? Would you trust that? If it was an official Nintendo site, um, yeah, I think so. But, you know, people are very, very convincing when they can do different things on the Internet. So they can replicate a site to make it look like it's actually Nintendo so you do have to be careful of that but if it was like a legitimate Nintendo website then yeah I would probably trust that. According to the May 1999 issue of Nintendo Power, the official release magazine from Nintendo fully endorsed by them including game creators and game testers, they verified that this was true, that missing number is an actual glitch. Oh wow. Yeah, I would trust that. That, that, says, that seems yes. very reputable. Wow. In, in fact, uh, also Nintendo made separate announcements warning those who encountered the glitch that it could corrupt the player's game data. Yeah, it actually has been authenticated by Nintendo themselves that this glitch is legitimate. So you were telling the truth. I, I, I was, and so was Missing Number. This is what actually happened. Capturing Missing Number as a functional Pokemon it has a Pokedex number of 000. So the Pokemon index, it has 151. Each number correlates to one of the Pokemon that you can get in the game. Since it's missing the data for it, it's missing a number, which is why it's called a missing number for the name of the Pokemon when you're battling it. Basically, the game itself doesn't know what to do because it's missing data. It kind of compiles a hybrid bird slash normal type of Pokemon but the actual visual representation of it is just pulling random data, which is why you get these kind of weird smudge of blocks and random images as the opponent for missing number. As described here, it commonly appears with a scrambled block-like form condensed as a backward 
L-shaped. Of course, that does depend upon the player's game. And uh, yeah, that has been The Legend of Missing Number. Apparently, this was so popular that some players actually attempted to sell tips on capturing Missing Number for up to $200 online back in the late 1990s. Oh, wow. Doesn't surprise me. So there we are. Dan, what do you think? Are you going to try to do this on your own Pokemon? Yeah, if I can dig up a game, I might. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Dan, we want to thank you for joining us on this journey. And uh, we want to remind you to continue going to WindsorPublicLibrary.com. We have a lot of great stuff available in our collection, including video games, which you can borrow for various systems. We have games for the Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One. Pokemon games. Uh, Yep, uh, we have Pokemon games as well. And graphic novels. And graphic novels for all Pokemon fans out there. So just want to encourage you to check that out. And Dan, once again, thank you for joining us on this edition of Fiction or Nonfiction. Thanks, guys. It was fun. So, Dave, I think it's time. I can tell you're uh, you're shuffling through your manila folder there. You have a random Dave fact slash question for me. So, yeah, a random Dave fact that went a little bit more in depth this time. So my question, it's not a question. It's a fact that you need to tell me if it's true or not, okay? Well, if uh, it's a fact, then it's true. Well, I need you to tell me if it's true. Okay. It's true, because you said it's a fact. Well, I need you to tell me if it's fact or fiction. I'm not saying for sure if it is. I'm so just, you're going to tell me a statement. I'm going to say something, and you're going to tell me if it's fact or fiction. Now that's true. The phrase or idiom. Do you know what an idiom is? Oh, I've met many idioms in my life. No, no, no. No, no, yeah, it's a little statement, a little quirky saying, or like uh, something that's repeated throughout culture. Yes. Yes. This phrase or idiom was it? It was derived from the entertainment industry in the 1940s. Now, is this fact or fiction? The phrase is, "Go fly a kite." Go fly a kite. You know what? Being that uh, we're not. 98, and I don't know if the majority of our listeners are. We should describe maybe, maybe what that means. Maybe one of them are, is. But yeah, what it does it, that mean? It's yeah. not really used anymore, but it's an old saying. People would say, ah, go fly a kite. It means get out of here. Stop bothering me. Exit. You're annoying. Go away. So like take many seats. Something like that. Yeah. But what's interesting about this expression, it does in fact have ties back to the entertainment industry in the 40s, but the origin of this phrase is not exactly known. That's so, what I referenced this from the Windsor Public Library. There, we have many different types of dictionaries and thesauruses and things that help. It's actually the thesauri. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Adam. Uh, so this is the Oxford Dictionary of Idioms or phrases, um, and we have many different versions of this. But I was able to find the "fly a kite, go fly a kite" thing, and what's referenced in here. There's actually two meanings. Okay, originally it meant to go try something out or test an opinion. Um, But in a historical sense, yeah, the phrase was used to raise money by an accommodation bill, meaning raising money on credit, um, testing the public opinion on whether something you were saying was credible. Um, So the U.S. phrase means to go away. Oh, that's very interesting. So that's what this one says, but we don't have an exact year. I I found some more instances of this term. One of the earliest known instances, it's being cited anyway, is in the American Thesaurus of Slang in 1942. Um, I was also able to find it in the Cassell Dictionary of Slang from 1998, uh, which kind of backs up some of this information I was saying. I was looking online as well, just trying to get different sources. For something like this, in general, trying to find this information was trying to tell me to go fly a kite. So from this website called phrases.org.uk, where it kind of goes into detail about different popular phrases and sayings from a long time ago, there, there is evidence in newspapers in the 20s using the, the phrase, go fly a kite. There was actually a song in 1939 by Bing Crosby called Go Fly a Kite, and that kind of ties into something we were mentioning on an earlier episode. They believe there's a connection with that phrase and Benjamin Franklin because he, in fact, did fly a kite with a, with a key on it, as uh, we know. And I was going to say, given the origin of the term given from the Oxford Dictionary of Idioms, if it's talking about taking a chance or putting something out there, I mean, that's by definition what, uh, what Frankie Boy was doing there with the key on the kite. There's another dictionary-type site called writingexplained.org. And this kind of delves into idioms and phrases. And it, 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 it says 
that the origin is not really known. There are examples of this phrase being used uh, in the New York Post and the LA Times in the, on this site. But again, it just says, says, go fly kite means to get out of here because you're bothering me. So we don't exactly know. It's another fact that has ties to things we've touched on before. Yeah, there's another fact for you about a phrase that you may or may not have heard of and may or may not hear of again. Well, I am a phrase to tell you that we are plumb done on time, Dave. So uh, I want to thank you for sharing that fact. And I want to thank you for all listening to this edition of Fiction or Nonfiction. For more exciting facts, you can just go to WindsorPublicLibrary.com or give us a call at 519-255-6770. In the meanwhile, I'm Adam. I'm Dave. And this has been Fiction or Nonfiction.